Welcome back to the channel, guys and gals. Hope everybody had a wonderful week. I apologize for being away for several days. Got home, had a family reunion, and then my wife, my, my lady's birthday was just a couple days after Father's Day. And I want to say to my lady, thank you for being my rock to this all. And both of us working together. It was, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing ride. Uh, other than that, uh, I did want to go into the ER, actually on her birthday, because she found out that I was in tears because I was in so much pain from my right shoulder, and I was refusing to go. And she said, "Do I need to hit you with my pickup truck to make sure you go to the ER?" Somehow, or another, I kind of believed her, so therefore I did go to the ER. And yes, it's not good. Right now, I am on steroids, anti-inflammatory, and a painkiller for my right shoulder, but I won't go see the shoulder doctor until July 5th. We'll find out at that point exactly what's going to be done. Whether or not it's going to be like an orthos, what they call an orthoscope, clean it up, or if it's going to be an actual full-blown surgery. I don't know yet until we see them, but the ER said that normally what they would not see in an x-ray it showed up on the x-rays at the ER. And basically, in a nutshell, the tendon is just hanging in. Now, I drive a truck for a living, and I run flatbed, heavy haul, and oversize. Figure that one out. A lot of fun times. So, uh, Kinky Shero build. It's coming along slowly. Uh, tonight, I did get... <laughs> Oddly enough, one window cut out for the door because I'm having to do everything left-handed right now, so I'm going to take my time with it. It's kind of frustrating because I can't put a lot of pressure on my shoulder right now. So it's very, very frustrating, so please forgive me if this takes some time to get this done. Uh, other thing is, is that last year, probably around, I believe around September, I think it was, maybe October, I purchased a box from a seller that I deal with quite a lot and he had sent me a message about it and asked me if I wanted these particular four post scale trade cars. Now they are the correct height, they are the correct width, not the correct length. Let me explain. These are 1950 scratch bills and he called me on them. I can't say call, message me. I guess you could still say call. And I asked him some pictures and asked me what I would give him for them. And I said, well, I said, honestly, at the shape they're in, I won't give any more than $10 on them. Next thing I know, he said, fair deal, send me the money. I sent him 10 bucks, he sent the box. This box has been sidelined for a while because I was doing some other stuff, but I decided, you know, I'm probably going to have some downtime here shortly, and I'm working on the truck. Keith and Cheryl style build cars coming close to an end. I got some other projects I got to get some other parts for, but I was like, you know, let's take a look at this. So what do we got here? And I do have some room to play with some of this, and you will see in just a second. Here is the box. Okay. Here is the roof to one of them. As you can tell, the, some of the vents are missing, which I do have. Uh, again, this does leave you some room. Notice right here, there's a slot here. That groove in here is to attach it to the end caps, but also there's a light bar that can go up in here. I'll show you one of those here in just a minute. So there is two roofs for the first two cars. This is actually very cool. The guy actually kept all the parts for me. And they were in rough shape. Here's the side pieces for the combine. Notice they're not 21 inches. Here's one of the car bodies. Metal castings on the end. Metal wheels. These are not Lionel. These were some aftermarket brand. Probably who the manufacturer was. Oddly enough, it's got plastic wheels on, except for the ones that do have the light bar in it, right here. 
very early light bar. That looks like that was sometime modified later. Uh, plastic wheels here, but had metal wheels here with a pickup. The Lionel pickup while mounted on some type of fiberboard. Hey, it worked, right? Here's the other one, which is the same deal. Pick up here. The would have been here. The plastic wheel for this simply would have been here, which I do have the parts for that. And here's another one of the light bars. Now these are some type of light bar. I have no idea what type of lights those are, but. Whatever they are, they work. Looks like a giant fuse, really. It works, and that was a later modification at some point. And there's the steps there. I do have all the steps for each one of these cars. Here's the other side pieces for the coaches, right here. Again, these are 1950 scratch wheels. Were people really doing scale stuff back then? Yes and no. Uh, they would probably do scale height, scale width, and maybe scale them down in length so that they would accommodate their situation. 027, 036 track, 042 at the biggest, probably. Maybe 072 if they got lucky. You gotta remember back then, one person could support a whole entire household without having much problems. And they could afford to do stuff like this. They, are, they had a small layout or something like that, or somebody set up at Christmas time. Just the way it was back then. So, yeah, these are very cool to actually get, and I enjoy getting these and rebuilding them. Uh, here's all the parts. Right here includes two other end caps, steps, wheel assemblies, knuckle couplers. It's all there. I will have to get some replacement parts. The good thing I've been able to outsource a lot of stuff, like diaphragms with a gentleman on eBay that does sell them. They 3D prints them off his printer. Very cheap, two pack, $2, you know, two or three dollars. Easy crazy, right? Alright, so here is the real baggage and real express car. Now this one, everything on these cars were lettered Southern Pacific. I'm actually very torn with this one. Um, because really it just needs the truck simply put back on. And the knuckle couplers are, I guess, scale for 1950. I mean, they're a little bit bigger. But these are not cages. These are not, these are actually metal, but I don't know how to explain it because it's not Lionel. Again, this one does not have any pickups on it, so this was a non lit car. Um, I am seriously thinking about keeping this one to its original form since it's primarily all there. I have pretty much glue the sides back on, rebrace, uh, stuff like that. And this one would be another easy breezy, put it back together, repaint it, and, you know, let it ride as it is. Uh, if I repaint, of course, I will lose the Southern Pacific lettering. That's okay, because the ones that are being saved as they are will wind up with each one of my kids' names on it. Uh, like this one right here, since this will probably be the first one I rebuild and put back on the rails, I'm probably going to wind up naming this one Texas Storm after my son, my 16-year-old that uh, 
I'm very proud of. He's up there in Michigan doing a great job in school. And he's made a big turnaround. So I'm very proud of my son. But either way, Texas Norm, that's probably we have his name on it. So looking forward to this one being done. Back on the rails. I gotta see what all parts I got for this one. On my new diaphragm, stuff like that. This one, I'm really, really torn on. Because this was another non lit. Now, this was the combine. And there is a significant bow right here in the frame. What I'm worried about with that bow, I don't know how well y'all can see that. is how it's going to affect the handling of the car. Uh, uh, this would be one of the things I've got to get some track and test it. Just to see if it's going to sit level. Or if I'm fixing up to raise the height on it a little bit to compensate. If I have to do that, I might as well change the trucks out at one time. I hate to do that because I don't want to lose the originality of it. This one was going to be named after my next son, Rogue Angel. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a way to soak it and bring it back. I'm just not too sure right now. But most of these cars have been modified in one way or another. This one's the worst one out of them all. Uh, it does see here. Where's the... see the boat. I am pretty good with wood. I grew up working with it. Sometimes when you get a situation like this, you can't really do anything with it. When it gets to a point where it's like this and already detailed. With that being said, is of length for that time period. Diaphragm to diaphragm, 14 inches. Outside and outside diaphragm, okay? 14 inches. That was probably scaled for whatever this person was on. Or a kid. Just kind of the way it was back then. Uh, now, these were all hand painted. There are brush strokes in the paint. They did a beautiful job hand painting them. It's very hard to get, keep from getting brush strokes and stuff. But you can definitely tell he tried his best and he really did a good job, uh, which is very nice. But again, this kind of goes back to my concern of with the having a significant bow like that, how it's going to affect the trucks. You know? Sit level, yeah, but 
I just, I, I'm just kind of really, really torn on that one. Uh, I will have to make a decision on how I want to go about doing that. But yes, these are the next, this, the next ones coming up after the Kiki Sherrow. Again, I'm not pushing hard on anything right now. That's one. I'm dealing with an injured shoulder. And just tonight alone, I'm already loaded on painkillers, muscle relaxers, and anti-inflammatories. So, just so I can go to sleep during this little bit. So, that's what we're doing right now. That's an update on the Kinky Shiro. What's been happening to me while I wasn't on the channel for a few days. And the upcoming builds and rebuilds of these. These 1950, 1950 scratch build pasture cars. Uh, and again, each one of them will have one of my children's name on it. So, as time progresses, every every pasture car will have one of my children's name on it. Kyle, Rogue, Kayla, all of them. You know, all my, all my kids that y'all seen in the previous videos. Um, and that's y'all be special. Again, this the baggage car will probably be the first one up to be put back on the rails. And this looks like this is going to be the easiest one to begin with. I'd much rather make sure let's leave it, one of them on here. I'd like to leave it as it is. Other than smooth out the roof, maybe add an extra few extra details. But other than that, leave her as she is and get her re letter. Pick up a lettering kit somewhere. I have to go down to Hobby, uh, not Hobby Town, but uh, Discount Model Trains. Pick up some low scale lettering from the Southern Pacific. Baggage car. This one right here, I don't want to alter. A decal kit. I think last time I checked down at Hobby Town, Hobby uh, not Hobby Lobby, but Hobby uh, Discount Model Trains. Sorry, I deal with a lot of different train places. Uh, I think it was like five bucks for a complete pack. I think that did like three cars or something like that, and that was us counting. But here's the uh, two passenger car bodies. Now these are straight. Like, again, I can modify these to bring it up to a scale length on these two. Because right now, it's just the frames. So I have room to play with. Uh, we will just see what I come up with on that. Um, and we'll just take it one step at a time with that. Two of these for sure will stay as they are. And two more will be modified, probably. Of course, every time I say probably, it usually happens. But guys and gals, I hope y'all enjoyed the update. I'm sorry the video ran a little longer than I expected. But it took me a little bit longer to be able to do it because I'm having to do everything kind of slow up my shoulder. As always, please keep the shiny set up, rubber down. If you like what you saw tonight and want to see the upcoming builds, please hit subscribe. It doesn't cost nothing. It just helps the channel out, that's all. Again, as always, y'all have a pleasant evening. Stay safe out there. I'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a great night.